No other public comment come forward state your name for the record. Mason Dean, St. George, uh, I wasn't going to speak, but then uh, I heard somebody say they want to protect our gateway, and I, now I'm, I'm, I'm panicking. Um, we have existing zoning already with our C2, C3, and C4, and I think the C4 does need uh, certainly some uh, rewriting. But let's not neglect the elephant in the room, and it's that boat basin. And we need a safe harbor. I hope that we can, um, I don't think we need a moratorium. I hope you'll vote no. Thank you. Any other public comments? Come forward, state your name for the record. My name is James Donald, and I do own property on the island. And uh, I uh, support the moratorium. I clearly see, since I've been here uh, the last three to four years, uh, a level of trust that uh, goes into making decisions like this. And I, I'm speaking for myself, by the way, the level of trust that goes in. I, I really want to be a part of the discussion. I mean, I paid quite a bit for my property. I'm a tax paying citizen, and uh, I look forward to y'all voting uh, to support this moratorium. Thank you. Come forward, state your name for the record. Good morning. I'm Tara, and uh, we've owned our place on St. George Island for 19 years. Um, I'm here, for, I'm here because I heard that they were considering putting more high-rise buildings in the central business district on the island. And um, I have two concerns. The first is I've been doing sea turtle work for the last six years, and you folks have helped tremendously with some of the regulations that you've put in place there. Um, we've gone from having um, just under 200 nests per year on St. George Island to having 450 or more. And St. George Island is the densest nesting area for the threatened loggerhead sea turtle in the whole um, Gulf Coast of Florida. So it's an extremely important area. Any high-rise buildings on that central business district are going to put light out over the entire section of coastline and that's going to seriously impact the sea turtles. So that's one issue that in zoning I hope you'll consider not allowing more high-rise buildings. The other question I had is, you know, uh, we've been coming down here for 30 years and I, East Point used to be a really charming little village and it was so sadly impacted by Dennis and doesn't seem to have recuperated well and I'm wondering why some of these commercial interests don't concentrate more in East Point they would be capturing people who are coming down 98 and traveling west people from the island will go off the island for dining and shopping but people coming down 98 aren't necessarily going to go onto the island. So I just wondered if that was an alternative place for development if we try to keep it minimum on St. George Island. Thank you very much. Uh, your last name, though, Ms. Sarah, your, your last name for the record. Oh, Wah, W-A-H. Come forward, say your name for the record. Stephen Kershaw, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You got to come up to the podium, sir. And you got to speak into the microphone where it's recorded. Thank you, sir. Stephen Kirschenbaum, St. George Island. Uh, we had the same problem where I lived up north, and they had a whole different outlook on it where you have somebody who owns property who wants to build and make money, and then you have a community that wants to keep their rural character. And the way they solved the problem is they let the developer make the money and they preserve the rural character by using state and federal money and county money to buy the development rights on the property that they wanted to keep pristine. So he could make money, you could preserve your rural character, and everybody's happy. And I don't know if there's state or federal money available for that, but just pick the green space that you want green space and buy it. Buy the development rights for the property. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Nick, please come forward. State your name for the record.
My name is Debbie Flowers. I've lived on the island for 32 years. I was born and raised here in Franklin County, and I support the six-month moratorium. Please consider this for the island and for Franklin County. Thank you. Thank you. Come forward, ma'am, at the back. You want to speak? Come forward. State your name for the record. My name is Joellen Pierman. I'm a resident of the island. I'm for the, the moratorium. Um, simply because we have to remember, first of all, we are an island. There's a, I understand we are the, the honey hole for income, for money, for Franklin County. I understand that. But it's an island. Anything that comes in there, you have to think of the sewage, the traffic, um, the power. Everything has to be considered. There's so much. And, but everybody wants to build there. Everybody went, there's only so much room. And it's, I think it's to a point, it's getting overwhelming because every, it's, the, from what I've seen, people are, and they're picking up the pace to want to be over there. And I do think we need to just sit back, see what we've got. We don't want to make it um, to where it's not the place people want to come anymore. They want to come there because they do have some peace. They do have some quiet. Um, and that's going to be gone if we're not careful. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Ma'am, please come forward. State your name for the record. Just to remind the public, this is a public hearing. You are afforded an opportunity to speak, so don't be shy. And I know this building is not full for just three people to speak. Take the time to come up and make your comments known. Please state your name for the record. Martha Hodge, and I am a resident of St. George Island, East End. Built the fourth house on the East End, so I've been there a while. But my real concern is that I, I really do support the moratorium, but I would ask that when you define um, the people who will be planning the commercial district, that you definitely um, include some seasoned as well as new homeowners, because homeowners may not be business owners and may not have vested interests, but we have, we, we have vested interests. I counted up, I've paid you almost a million dollars since I've lived here, and I'm delighted because it's a privilege to live there. But I would say that whatever your committee looks like, be sure that you have people who really are committed to the process and people who bring the, um, I guess, attitude of homeowners um, to that group. It's not strictly a business. Thank you very much. Real, real quickly to address one of your comments. I don't think the board here has, has decided if there would be a committee, right. what kind of committee. I do know there will be a lot of public hearings run through our planning and zoning agency. Thank so you will be afforded many, many, many opportunities to participate and, and to make your feelings known in, in what you believe the island should look like. That's assuming I stay above ground in time. We hope you do. <laughs> we hope you do. Thank you for your comments. Next. Anyone else want to speak? Please come forward, state your name for the record. Anna Carmichael. Today I represent the St. George Island Business Association as well as um, being a business owner on St. George Island and a resident of the county. Speaking for the St. George Island Business Association, we do support the six month moratorium and we also ask if a committee is formed that we be allowed um, voices to be heard. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Please come forward, sir. State your name for the record. Uh, hello, my name is John Neisler. Uh, we've been in this county since the 70s. Uh, I have a beach house on St. George Island. I have property on the plantation. And I own the three lots beside the express lane on the island that's right on the main road there. Uh, I, I, you know, haven't studied any of this issue. The moratorium may be fine, but I wanted to have someone from, uh, and it seems like I'm the only one on this side, that has commercial property 
that I'm afraid I'm nervous about owning this property, paying taxes on it all these years, and having it deemed worthless by everyone else, you know. Uh, what happens in six months? I, and if y'all do this moratorium six months from now, you know, what, do you extend it? Or, uh, I, I, I would just like to have some kind of assurance that my property I've been paying taxes on forever is not going to be deemed worthless. No, so I don't think your property is going to be deemed worthless. This is just a planning tool at the end of the moratorium, and then we will have regulation regarding what you can and can't build and, and different other things. But uh, being your property worthless, I don't think, is, is, is a correct assumption. Let's hope it's not. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please come forward, state your name for the record. Lady. Jo George, could you give me a minute? A lady's been standing right there waiting. Give me just a second, you can be next. Come forward, ma'am, state your name for the record. Bunny Ison, I live on St. George Island, and I'm here with some pictures of our island. I've got some friends also. I just am here because I want to preserve the integrity of this beautiful island. I moved here from Tennessee. As many of us have moved here from many places because of the beauty of that island. So the signs that say vote no, it's not against the moratorium. We're voting no for an RV park, specifically as you enter our island. We have heard there's possibility that might be there. We just think it would not be what we want to see as we come on to that beautiful beautiful island. We're also voting no uh, to increase the heights of the buildings on the island. And I think um, she expressed it very well in terms of turtles, but also just in, in terms of what we see. We don't want to be like every other island or every other place in Florida. Please help us keep our island like it is. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate everybody being here. Um, I think we all share the same interest. Uh, St. George Island, a, a beautiful place as you come on to it. Um, so, obviously, this affects the property I acquired back in 2012. Um, just a little history, uh, there's, a, there's a document uh, in the second half of the coastline that provides a lot of good background information. Um, we, we purchased that property in order to have an expansion of the Maritime Museum um, onto uh, the Barrier Island where the harbor would be restored. We would have a scouting high adventure base. We uh, restarted the trial. Uh, Troop 22 Scout Troop. It was with um, with a great deal of effort and expenditure of funds and time that we removed the, the snarled uh, undergrowth. We coordinated with the Florida Department of Forestry to do a controlled burn about the same time that a controlled burn was taking place in the plantation, which is a great thing. Uh, does anybody dissent with that idea? That a controlled burn is a good thing? It also helped remove the, the, the fuel load that a wind-borne flame coming across the island would be, a, that would be a vector to carry it across Gulf Beach Boulevard. We then went on to uh, remove the dead and deceased trees. Uh, we bush hogged the, the uh, land to make it a, give it a nice appearance. We um, started the removal of derelict vessels. That one big sailboat, I, I, if that's not the one on the basin, it, it looks like it. But um, we haven't had heavy enough equipment to get in there and move that out. I've, I've tried to get a uh, shade tree towing to uh, come over and pull it out, but they're, they're not going to do it. So it's going to have to be busted up and moved out, and we just don't have the equipment to do that at this point. Uh, we, we, were planning, we are planning on doing that as part of the uh, dredge preparations uh, that has been approved by this board, um, or this commission. Um, we went through a 
two to three year long permitting review process with the Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, we met all of our standards to uh, create a, a beautiful basin. I, I, I was going to bring those uh, photos with me, but instead, I would urge everyone to, that wants to get the details on this, go, go to the website that we set up. It's, uh, it's listed in the coastline, and uh, you can see the overlays that went into the planning process. Uh, the, that endorsement by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection was enormous. Uh, it was a very hard planning session. We, we met with them probably 12 or 15 times. Um, got a lot of good input. It is essentially renewing the original basin that was there. And the documents that you can view online show the property going all the way back to the early 1950s and, and provide a history. Uh, originally, the Speaker and the Sirius were two um, ferry boats. And I, I remember the ferry boats. My family's been here quite a while, since the uh, 1840s. Um, and the, I, the memories of that time were profound. A little boy of five years old being on a big old ferry boat was something else. And, they, and those ferry boats came out of, uh, out of New York Harbor. They were the Staten Island ferry boats. Um, that went on and it connected uh, East Point with St. George Island and Dog Island and Caraville. And um, it was a profound era. And then the bridge came along in 1965 and the ferry boats went away. But the harbor was still used um, as the aerial photographs demonstrate by up to 30 or 40 fishing boats. There's a photos from the 1975 era. For those of you that have been here since the 70s, you, you may remember that. George, could I interrupt you here? Yes. Well, we're here for the issue of the moratorium, right. not a history lesson. If I allowed every, if I allowed every property owner in here to give me a history on their property, we'd be here until next week sometime. Right. So please hold your comments and don't speak to the audience. You're here to address the board. Okay. You keep turning around and speaking to the audience. Speak to the board. Speak on the moratorium issue, whether you're for it, whether you're against it, and, and let's move forward because we still got another public hearing after this one. I appreciate Thank you. that. Yes, you're welcome. So, um, to move on to the ordinance as it's proposed. And it does have a lot of history, and that is the, the gateway corridor that we've been looking at. And it's, I think a little bit of history is, is appropriate, especially to newcomers. Um, so, on the second draft, um, I, I read that through, and the comments from the first uh, moratorium hearing had a lot of assurances uh, to David Duncan, um, the uh, other builders. Um, let's see, there was. Mason Bean, David Duncan, Billy Wagner, Roger Crawford, um, all of whom were concerned that this moratorium was going to prevent their ability to maintain their commercial properties. There were exa examples given um, by um, Billy Wagner um, that his application for development would be shut down um, for roof repair. Roger Crawford also um, mentioned roof repairs, I believe. David Duncan, who was up here just a little while ago. Um, so the assurance we were given that that, I think the wording used by Mr. Schiller was that um, that was an oversight on his part and uh, did not intend to impact folks uh, on their, and that, that they had other intended targets. But when reading through the new version, the only exempt properties are R1 and lands owned by the county. So do we still stand that we cannot pull a, um, a permit to do a roof repair if it's leaking or HVAC repair if it's uh, going to be fine? That's not the way I understand it. That's, that's the way I read it, and it's hard to be clarified. The ordinance out. Madam Speaker, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, to address a specific question, the ordinance that was put uh, on file with the clerk was the original draft of the ordinance, which you required to, to file with the clerk uh, as you advertised to the public hearing. 
as we had the first public hearing, there was some public comment. There was actually some discussion uh, between myself and Mr. Theriak in advance of the public hearing, and we noted that there needed to be a provision for people that needed to repair and maintain their existing commercial buildings. And as we've discussed here today, if they had to replace a, a building that was damaged as a result of uh, a natural occurrence such as fire or storm damage, they would be allowed to pull, pull a building permit. So the ordinance, if you should adopt it, would have that provision in it in its final form. So if they need to replace a set of stairs, somebody need to repair a driveway, um, all that's allowed. Correct. The way I understand it, the way I've been Correct. told uh, the ordinance is, is drafted. So, so some of the issues, if your air conditioner blows up, you can't put a new air conditioner in. No, that's not the case. If it requires putting a permit, that would require. <clears throat> is it, and this, uh, there's not a date on the draft that I pulled from the uh, county website. I was looking at paragraph seven. May I approach? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, so there is a new version. Yes. And you're going to add about the storm as we have Irma barreling down to us. Oh, that, yes, sir. Okay. Then the other thing uh, has, was there a change, David, in the uh, administrative remedy yeah. provisions? Okay, all right. So then comes the matter of administrative remedy. And um, Sykes case law uh, that the average person will need an attorney to interpret, uh, narrowly defined to precluding the compensation for removal and restriction of the vested rights of the property owner. And I think is what the gentleman at the is that what Is that what's in the ordinance? Is that what you're reading? Mm -hmm. Well, we're here to discuss the moratorium, the ordinance governing the moratorium, not all. all. That's, that's what I mean. Okay. Yes, sir. The administrative remedy, Mr. Chairman, is part of the proposed moratorium. Okay. Is this okay. This, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we're over three minutes, too, so I'm trying to get to the point we're where, and a half minutes where other here. people have opportunities to speak also. And I ask everyone at the beginning of the public hearing, please try to limit your comments to where the next person will have an opportunity. That's all I'm saying. Well, there's a lot of facts that need to come out that have impact on property owners. And um, I don't know if anyone else has done the same level of review and research, but, but this, this administrative remedy um, is going to be very difficult to access. It's for the short term, six month period, and if that's not extended. Um, and the county is the one that reviews the, whether or not a administrative remedy appeal is, is, um, is, is approved or disapproved, and if disapproved, 10 days to respond. So if the gentleman that owns three lots is out of town or whatever um, and unable to respond in that time frame, it will be considered waived. So that's a, that's a very short time frame to respond to a denial of an administrative remedy. Um, we moved, um, there was some, some, some uh, conflicts between the 2100 foot uh, circumference radius and now this map um, in the 3rd Street to 3rd Street. And all of those are, um, I guess, a little bit confusing. If this is the new uh, uh, area that is a, a, to be managed by this moratorium, then um, that is, uh, that's probably a good clarification. Um, I tell you what, no, no. I better be start praying according to this here. They give Franklin County a direct hit at 180 miles an hour. Yeah. That, and that, the thing is that, are we talking the yellow or are we talking the first thing? I've never seen all of this. <laughs> so are we talking about the, the first slide that he gave or the yellow part? We, we've not decided yet, ma'am. We're still receiving public comment. And when Mr. George gets through, I'm going to ask for more public comment. So that's where you're kind of limit to everybody and not making a 30-minute proposal. I think, Mr. Chairman, you tried to limit everybody to three minutes, if I'm not mistaken. That's what he asked for. You asked for three minutes. There's him going on for you. I think you got to sit him down. You know, there's a lot of people that haven't had their opportunity, but could you please get to the point and let someone else I'm try. trying to get through, through the points. Um, so the, the other element is if there is a impairment of right of use or removal of a property right, there is a reverse uh, condemnation uh, 
process where there is a lawsuit that's required to address the loss of property rights and the loss of property values, and those will be forthcoming. Uh, since the moratorium is even inactive, we've not even got to that point. If, so. if, if restrictions like that are imposed, which is certainly the purpose of the moratorium, um, you know, these are going to be more legal costs that pile up with respect to the individuals who have to pursue legal matters and to the county who's funding the expertise to support its efforts to take those property rights away. So are you for the moratorium or against it? Or? I'm, 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 I'm not in favor of the moratorium. Okay. I think that uh, if you're going to do a moratorium, may maybe you should consider a moratorium for East Point. There's a very valid point brought up about that corridor, and it, they come through East Point before they come to the island. And is that is that corridor and that initial view also so bad that it's going to make somebody turn away? Is the, is the whole court is the view as you come into the island going to make somebody not come back? Look at what's there today. You know, we've got all this public parking on on Bayshore Avenue with the business there being a restaurant bar, and I'm not knocking them, I'm just saying that's what's there now. There's already a lot of damages and, and risk to people for that access and venue, and your, your moratorium's not even going to cover that. Unless you're going to have what the moratorium may go. Well, we don't know. Uh, we have thought is that you would to establish a moratorium, yeah. I thought my thought is that you would seek to make those kind of improvements. We might. Okay. Okay. Who knows? But there's other people that want to speak, George, I'm sorry. Well, we'll, we'll cut it off, but I, I, um, I just would like to close in saying that um, we've done a lot to try and bring about a harbor there, um, and that was approved by the Board of Adjustment and the uh, Planning and Zoning Board, and uh, subsequently delayed and then uh, declined or denied by the Board of Commissioners. That would have been a beautiful addition, and the, the only response I had to get any kind of value from the property as a property right was to propose this RV park and I'm hopeful that along this way that we can get this harbor plan which was very diligently prepared back on the table and get it approved. Um, are, you, are you speaking of the dredging? The dredging and development of the harbor. The dredging was not approved? It is approved. Okay, well what are we talking about then? The, the rest of the harbor. The rest of the harbor? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not going to get into it right now because we're, we're here to address more to it, but I do appreciate your comment. Right. Next, please come forward state your name for the record. Uh, Jesse Page. Paul Polis. Uh We interested, uh, we're here today, uh, Smoke, because we're interested in uh, uh, trying to get an oyster lease. Okay, this is the wrong time, so we're in middle of a public here on a moratorium on, on St. George Island. That's not an issue that we're going to talk about right now. Okay, when will be the best? Public time? comment at the end of the meeting. Right now we're in the middle of a public here that has nothing to do with oil releases. Gotcha. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Anyone else here to speak about the moratorium? Please come forward, state your name for the record. of the time limit as you have before. I'm asking you to go a time machine with me five years away, 10 years away, 15 years away, and somebody in Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, Tennessee is asking a neighbor, are you going to St. George Island this year? And he says, no, we haven't done that for several years. The county commission had a chance several years ago on September 5th, 2017, to put a small step in place to make sure that the island and Franklin County was developed properly. Did they do that? Well, maybe, but you know, now the Bay River is clean as it used to be. Some of the best oysters in the world came from that island. The seafood was the best in the world. It was a beautiful place. And now you come on the island, there's RVs, there's high-rise buildings. It's hard to get to Franklin County. It's so much easier to go to Panama City. We can get there much easier now, it's the same. 
it's the same. And there's so many other places in all of Florida that don't look any different. I respectfully ask the commissioners to please do the duty that the people of Franklin County gave to you and please say yes to the moratorium. Thank you for your comment. Please come forward, state your name for the record. Hi, my name is Jessica Sparks. My husband and I own Patty's Raw Bar on St. George Island, along with multiple lots in the commercial district. We are 100% supportive of the moratorium. I think that we need to have a little control on what goes on the island and what people that actually live, work, and support the island want, and what we want people to be a part of when they come on the island. So, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Any other public comment? You got a hand up in the back. Please come forward, state your name for the record. <laughs> 